Hello. How's my hair? Oh, it looks good. Okay. Yes. Not sticking up everywhere? No. Okay. We were very close to another family who had a six-year-old boy and a daughter about the age of our daughter. And he was born with some medical challenges, but had overcome a lot. When our boys were six, he died of a heart attack. And it was obviously tragic for their family, but it was really traumatic for our family as well. I think when you're in crisis like that, you just keep putting one foot in front of the other. Or you don't, some people don't. They get stuck there. But we just kept moving forward and doing what we had to do and tackling each challenge as it came. Nathan's mom is my best friend. And she's grown a lot and I can't imagine what she's endured. But I really admire her faith and she challenges me in my faith. Just just watching her deal with life and deal with loss. And Nathan's death for her is one of several. Some people seem to, some people that seem to have more than we can imagine enduring. And she's one of those people. Years ago, she and I were talking about Nathan's death and how it's impacted her and her faith. And she said something that has stuck with me and, and I return to often, that we have our natural way of dealing with things. And then we have what we believe is the godly way or the spiritually mature way of responding. And she believes that over the years of growth, for her, there's less distance between the two, or it doesn't take her as long to get from here to here as it used to. And I really appreciate that. And I think of it often in my own life and in talking with other people, that we're not either this or this. You know, scripture says that David was an adulterer and a murderer, but he was a man after God's own heart. He wasn't an adulterer and murderer or a man after God's own heart. He was both. And Teresa reminds me of that, that we are both of these things, but in, as we grow, there's less space between them. There is light at the end of the tunnel. It will get better.